Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Use the Right Strategies for Equipment Maintenance. My name is Tracy Purdom and I'm the Executive Digital Editor for Chemical Processing, which is producing this event. This event is sponsored by GE Digital. The proper mix of corrective, preventative, and predictive maintenance for equipment must balance cost, risk, and availability. In today's webinar, we will discuss three ways to get optimal return on your operations and maintenance expenditures. To complement this discussion, we will have a live audience-driven Q&A session at the end of the presentation, so please submit your questions as they occur to you. Now, before I introduce our speakers, there are a few housekeeping issues that I'd like to review. On your screen, you should see several sections, and I will highlight a few of those for you. The top left is the Q&A and tech support box. At any time during today's presentation, you can type your question for our presenters right here, and we'll get to your questions during the Q&A. And if you're having technical problems, you can simply type in your question or concern, and one of our technical engineers will assist you. In the largest section is where today's presentation slides will be displayed. And to the right is our handouts area. Here you will find today's slide deck as well as several additional resources. We hope that you take advantage of those. If you need a better view, you can enlarge a section by clicking on the box in the top right corner of the section. If you accidentally close out of a section, you can get it back by clicking on the colorful icons at the bottom of the screen. If you just hover over those, they will tell you what they are. This webcast will be archived. We encourage you to direct coworkers to the recorded presentation. It'll be available at chemicalprocessing.com's website. We will also send out an email with that link as well. And one final note, we ask that you respond to an exit survey at the end of the event. Your answers will help us to improve future events. And now I'd like to introduce today's speakers. Mark Sinizic is Senior Product Manager with GE Digital. Mark is currently responsible for maximizing product value, developing strategic product vision, and ensuring customer satisfaction for the GE Digital Asset Performance Management Strategy products. Also joining us is Anna Toralba, Reliability Senior Staff Consultant. Anna is a leading practitioner in reliability and maintenance improvement, me improvement methodologies. She has hands-on experience in reliability, maintenance, operations, and engineering in many manufacturing industries, including chemical plants and oil and gas facilities. Welcome to you both. I'm looking forward to today's presentation. You bet, and thank you uh, so much uh, for the introduction and the opportunity to speak with uh, you and everyone else on the call today, and thanks to Anna for joining as well. So much appreciated. Uh, so today we're gonna to be talking about optimal return on equipment strategies. Pretty big topic, but we're gonna to try to distill this down to what we feel like are the fundamental um, elements of such a program and how you can leverage some of these fundamental elements to get the uh, returns that you and your organization are looking for. So we're gonna keep it uh, focused on uh, those philosophical and conceptual ideas. We're not gonna be talking about software or features or functions um, uh, for the most part. Uh, that is a part of the story, but we're gonna keep this uh, at a conceptual level. And we look forward to uh, getting into there and answering any questions you might have as we roll on through. So, as Anna and I work with customers in the industry, and I've been doing this uh, 20 years, uh, and Anna's been in, uh, doing this uh, at least that long or longer, um, we run into many customers and uh, manufacturers and, and asset intensive organizations that struggle with maintaining uh, what we would call an, an optimal outlay of their capital to achieve what their business goals are and aligning the investments that they're making in maintenance uh, primarily, but also in, in other what we would coin a, equipment strategies uh, generically to achieve basically these three, two buck, uh, three buckets. There's, there's certainly flavors of this, but 
balancing how to optimize the amount of money that they're spending and what those costs are, not only in their maintenance spend, but how the, that those resources are allocated and how that impacts, for instance, how much money they're spending on corrective work um, based on poor performance of the assets or unavailability or uh, unreliability of the assets. Um, managing the risk that they've defined uh, to their organization, whether that be from a safety standpoint, environmental standpoint, what have you. And then finally, maintaining a level of equipment availability and uptime that they need to be able to produce product. And these things, these three things are interrelated. Uh, oftentimes when you try to make an impact in one area, you it, it is a, to a detriment of the other area and you have to maintain what we would consider an optimal balance between these investments to ensure you're getting the most out of those investments and a return on those. And so as we talk about these um, ways to optimize, uh, those are the three things that we want to con continually have in the back of our mind of needing to balance organizationally because your organization needs all three. You can't really do one and, and not the other. Uh, now we can have focus and initiatives in particular areas depending on our business environment and what our uh, corporate objectives or business objectives are. Uh, but that's the primary things that we need to do. And so at this point, also, many of the customers we work with are really struggling with three basic uh, elements of this. And that would be they, they, they've got ineffective strategies in place. So they know most customers have uh, PM uh, programs in place and they're, they're performing preventive maintenance, but they're not sure uh, how effective those programs are. And uh, from a cost perspective, they're not sure how efficient those investments are today. Uh, and that also dovetails into the need or the lack of control and standardization around these equipment strategies. And ineffective and inefficient strategies really can have a negative impact on the business in the form of costs being higher than we'd like them to be. Uh, we often refer to a cost structure as being optimal. Uh, a lot of times customers are in a cost cutting or and they have a lot of cost pressure in their business. So this is one of the main areas that they're looking to make an impact in. And we'll talk about the specifics around where they can make impacts there, but are they over maintaining uh, equipment that's not critical? Are they under maintaining equipment that, that is critical? Um, and so O&M costs may be above what they need, they need to be to achieve what their objectives are. This often leads to um, potentially downtime and corrective maintenance if they have ineffective equipment strategies and they're not mitigating the risk. Uh, they could be ex uh, have increased risk exposure and ultimately, as well being uh, impacting their spare parts and inventory. So they're use, if they're over maintaining equipment, then they're using more parts and inventory than they need. They're often holding more uh, inventory than they might need. Uh, ultimately, a re reduced return on the uh, asset overall, uh, again, a lack of, uh, of availability and uptime of the asset, and really effectiveness and productivity of the workforce and the resources that they do have, they don't feel like that they're getting the most out of uh, the resources that they've employed. And so when we talk about an asset strategy, we talk about equipment strategies, what is that really? Well, it's really anything that we're doing to maintain, monitor, um, inspect, observe, uh, or operate a piece of equipment. And many times this is either prevented and comes in the forms of preventive maintenance programs or budgets, uh, predictive or condition monitoring types of programs, but it can also take the form of operator rounds and newer technologies where we're observing the asset, taking readings. Uh, we have sensor uh, technology out there. So there's a lot of different um, techniques and, and practices that fall under this uh, what we would call an asset or equipment strategy. And when we think about where customers are today, 
many of them are in a reactive mode. Uh, they have some uh, preventive measures in place and we see customers depending on the maturity and, and how mature they are with their programs, being on this uh, continuum of trying to move toward a more predictive and planned mode of operating and less from a reactive one. We know that reactive work and, and having to go back and perform corrective activities is much more expensive, anywhere from three to 10 times the cost of performing preventive maintenance. So are we performing uh, the right maintenance at the right time? Um, and can we get away from these reactive mode of, of uh, a, monitoring and maintaining equipment and moving more toward a planned and predictive type of program. Now, we're not always going to be able to do that. It depends on the type of equipment. It dep depends on the resources that we have. It depends on the technology that we have. But without some structured way of, again, having control and standardization and, and a systematic approach to how they're allocating their resources and how they're investing and which types of activities they're investing in, they can't really make progress and get traction toward improvement. So along those same lines, if we help customers push back away from reactive or corrective work back up into a more predictive or preventive mode of operating, you can see that the cost uh, of these repairs tends to go down. And of course, uh, we can find and uh, detect where there might be issues earlier on and avoid failures uh, that are going to either cause a downtime or cor expensive corrective work and move away and be able to detect things earlier take corrective action, avoid potential um, hazards and things that affect our bottom line. So when we think about the practical application of this, how are we examining what we're doing today and how we're making our investments today? And we're being able, what we're gonna be able to do is adjust to our business needs uh, we also want to be able to adjust to our um, corporate or business environment. So what modes are we operating under? Uh, again, are we in a cost-cutting scenario? Is reliability and safety a priority for us? So all these other challenges that um, we that face us, we need to be able to have a standard structure and way of maintaining and managing equipment strategies in a way that helps us tailor our approach to what our business needs are and make, again, an impact on the bottom line toward um, improvement. And when we think about improvement over time, when we look at traditional ways of strategy development, we, we consider them in, in a lot of ways static, right? If we think of uh, RCM methodologies of the past where you might go do a study on a really critical system and that's either done on a spreadsheet or even in the old days in a binder and we get a great strategy in place and, that op and that's a, a standard or best practice for us for a while. But what happens is over time, we know that equipment uh, ages. We know that uh, ultimately business conditions change, process conditions can change, and ultimately, whoops, sorry, I'm going to click on that slide. Ultimately, the benefits of that strategy seem to win. And ultimately, where we want to get to is to be able to provide a strategy that helps us adapt to our business needs. And as uh, the equipment ages or changes and the health of the asset changes, we want to be able to adjust our strategy through the entire life cycle of the asset. Um, and that's another cornerstone of effective asset management that we found uh, working with, with customers. So as we think about the work processes uh, that we support and the work processes that are critical to be able to help us um, provide optimal equipment strategies and maintain, so develop those strategies, optimize those strategies, and then sustain them over time. 
the work process is, uh, these uh, five work processes are what we can support and what we prescribe customers to be able to do to essentially have a continuous improvement program in place. And Anna is going to elaborate a little bit more on each one of the steps within this work process and talk about uh, some of the goals and objectives of each one of those. Great, thanks Mark. <clears throat> and thanks everyone for joining this webinar. Um, let's talk about more to the APN strategy work process. And there are some steps that Mark mentioned, but I will go through one by one and we will talk about a little more. Basically, the first step is evaluate the criticality of the asset. Um, one of the things that is more important I think is agree what is the risk metrics to be used. It is important and sometimes it's so difficult when we have in a customer side, it is some of the thing that uh, is important to um, think what is the risk metric to be used and assemble the equipment hierarchy and see if we are going through the asset at equipment or a system level. Basically, the criticality analysis, or if you can do an effective criticality assessment, help the end user or the customer quantify what is the consequence, what is the probability that you have in your business if a failure occurs. Uh, it is the reason that uh, has a criticality in place, help the customer to understand what is the criticality uh, in your business and you can prioritize in the different things that you have in operation or maintenance uh, based on the criticality of your asset. In many cases, the result of a criticality assessment is around 20-15% of the asset population that represent the 80 or 85% of the largest potential consequence that you have uh, in your business. It is the first step. Uh, try to think that it's necessary to have a criticality assessment across the enterprise, and then we can start prioritize our operational and ma maintenance expenditure, uh, thinking in a risk perspective. The second steps, once you have the criticality assessment ready, and basically at this point it's important to identify what is the failure mode or the risk that is affecting your asset or your equipment or your system. It depends what is the uh, approach that you took for the criticality assessment. Um, it's important to go and identify what is this uh, failure mode or what is the risk that is present when you have a failure. And sometimes some customer use, as Mark mentioned, the RCN methodology or the FEMEA methodology, or maybe you have an RBI inspection methodology for the fixed equipment. But it's important to review all of this analysis if you are taking one of this approach and review and customize based on or your operational context. And maybe if you have a good quality of your data, uh, I really recommend that you can review your history of the data that is coming from your CMMS or your EIM and you can complement uh, when you are uh, in the development of this analysis. Sometimes when I went to customer, is really, um, when you talk about the RCN analysis or FMEA, I think all the manager thing is time consuming and a boy to go through this process. And sometimes you see in a folder Okay, what is your RCN? It's in a folder, but it's not in your CMMS or in your EAM because consume a lot of time and sometimes people doesn't apply the, the strategy in the asset. <clears throat> and I will tell in, in a future slide that we have some help for the customer to accelerate this process and gain 
a value and time to value for this case. Once the criticality has been assessed and you know what is the risk and failure modes that have been identified, it's important to know and I basically when you identify your failure mode, you need to identify what is your task or your mitigation action to avoid these failure modes or occur in your in your business. And then uh, it is important to understand what is the risk for each one and the cost associated because when you is, go to the next step in the optimization, uh, it is the two thing that is important to balance the risk and the cost. And there are many potential tasks that uh, can be performed to mitigate the potential risk for an asset. And I know that Mar mentioned in one of the first uh, slides about the runtime <clears throat> maintenance tasks, preventive maintenance, basically based on time base. There are some activities uh, that is condition-based maintenance or predictive maintenance. It depends where is the technology that the customer has and what uh, we need to perform. Sometimes a uh, customer doesn't have the technology to go through to the predictive, but it's important to think for the critical asset uh, uh, to avoid failures, have to... Um, tools that help you in real time know what is the performance of your asset. And then um, when you finish your maintenance strategy and you have a plan with the task, uh, it's important to balance the schedule, the resource, the workforce that you have in place to manage and execute this program. Okay, uh, let me continue uh, and one of the things that I want to mention when I, I was referring to the reliability centered maintenance analysis and failure mode and effect or some templates that you have and you want to apply to your asset is that there is another way that help the end user uh, to uh, basically um, accelerate this process and help the companies to quickly configure and optimize this process. And it is the asset strategy accelerator uh, are designed to enable faster time to value, save money, and help the customer um, gain financial value for the facilities and across the enterprise. G Digital, one of the first set of the accelerator include the asset management strategies. It is at the point that I will mention here. And it's designed, it is a content that has industry knowledge, the best practice and expertise um, coming from G Digital, uh, architect, engineer, technology partner, SME, that help the customer has a prevailed product that you can use uh, and apply for your different categories that you have in your company. And you can have this content and enable quickly in APM. And when, when I say enable is because you can have these strategies, you can adjust and apply, and then you have the, the value in APM because you have the health pillar, the analytics, et cetera, and you have the business process workflow um, to enable this part. I'll, I like this uh, the, as a strategy as a later, and sometimes I, I, I like to mention from our general manager, is Linda, that she say that the industry is rapidly changed and companies need to deploy and gain insights from software at faster speed than ever before. And yeah, I believe we are in now in, in this time that we need to move faster and save time and money um, in a quickly way. There's a strategy accelerators um, uh, for as a strategy is a collection. Uh, I mentioned that of a predefined template that contain the failure mode or the risk and the mitigation action. Basically, it's your 
a strategy plan that you need to apply for your assets or your equipment type. APN is very uh, friendly that you can apply this content for a group of assets at the same time, or maybe you want to apply for a one equipment and then you can customize. It's depending what is the the business, what is the approach that you want to uh, follow. Um, this content or this accelerator uh, contain more than 236 equipment types plus the uh, API seal plans that is a, a great library and collection of content that we have. We cover different uh, categories like rotating, mechanical, electrical, safety and control and utility. And it's a crawl for different business vertical, uh, principal oil and gas, power generation and petrochemical industry. And also um, it's important to mention that the in this case, the asset strategy as accelerator can eliminate thousands of resources, the hours, development, equipment strategies, and process in the industry. Uh, it's, a, it's a great content that we have. Is accelerate the adoption and stand to bail on it. At the end, is a, you will have a sustainable uh, ROI that you can see when you start using this content instead start from scratch. You know? Okay, continue with the word process or the APN word process. Um, in the third step, once all the failure modes or the risk and potential mitigation action are understood, uh, the next step is establish a right balance between the risk and the cost. What is the level of risk mitigation that you want to achieve? And it's the pain of the criticality of the asset in the cost of the action plan. It is really key to optimize a preventive maintenance program. Um, in the tool, um, it's really easy to go through this process and help you in a visualized way what is the risk and cost that you have in your asset and what happened or how you can balance your maintenance strategy using a what if. What if if I remove an action from my plan or what if, if I add a new one, what happened? Uh, this part uh, of the process is really important because help uh, the customer to sometimes eliminate cost and on unnecessary plan maintenance or no critical asset. Um, sometimes you can see that you have some action that is not mitigating any risk or is really uh, low the, the value that you are reducing your risk. Um, it is the thing that the APN help the user in this case to optimize your strategy and have a good strategy to be more effective uh, for all the actions that you are performing. In the next step, uh, and basically um, before I jump for the step four, um, in the asset strategy optimization, in the pre-optimization before you is decide to remove or add new action. You have the existing maintenance strategy or, or plan that you will apply for your asset. And then when you start your uh, optimize, uh, optimize your plan and you start see what is your balance between your risk and your cost for your action. Um, maybe you decide to remove some action, maybe you decide to add new action, and at the end of this exercise, you will have a strategy that is updated and is applicable for your business. Um, at the end, you will have an orange uh, phase that is your savings. You have the remaining actions that you decide to keep because um, is action that sometimes is mandatory or are action that is helped to reduce 
um, you risk in the asset. And there are some new actions that maybe you decide to incorporate because, you, for example, you review your history and you see that there are new risks that you need to incorporate because it's not in the template, it sometimes occur. And this type of thing is dynamic. As uh, Mark mentioned at the beginning that we are moving from static strategies to dynamic strategies and at the end is the goal because it is a process that is changing and the strategy need to be changed depend of the condition uh, of the asset, if the performance increase or not increase, if the operation change, we need to be and adapt to these new things. Okay, <clears throat> when we have uh, ready and when we establish a sustained and effective risk-based maintenance programs, um, across the enterprise. Um, the next step is really important because we need to manage and implement this program uh, for our asset. And we need to consider the different source that you have in place or the customer has. And we need to harmonize this strategy management in the different system that you have for execute and at the end, have a, an output that can help a, the user to identify and continue the cycle in this in in this process. One of the part that I want to mention that when you enable this program and you decide, okay, what is the uh, the source that I am ex will execute this task or this action. It is important the, to document the outcome of the maintenance plan in the different source because it is one of the points that help at the end to um, maybe have a, some KPI or key performance indicator that help to improve the process. If we don't document, sometimes it's difficult because we don't know if a failure mode is secure. Um, we don't know what happened when the operator or what the, the technician is doing the task. Uh, it is one of the things that uh, it, it is important um, to be aware of. If you don't have in place, it is important to start working on that to have a good data quality and help this data to improve your strategy in the future. Okay, the next step or step five uh, in this cycle um, is basically, and it is one of the biggest uh, differentiator for APN strategy uh, suite that we have, is that we can uh, drive the corrective action and continue improvement or establish a continued improvement process. And there are different elements that do ne we need to take in account, but um, it's important to proactively manage the effective correction action program and integrate the asset strategies across all the multiple system and APN, including all the different pillars that we have in APN. It's not only the asset strategies including application that integrity, health, policy, reliability, et cetera. Um, is adjusting the aging for the equipment. And it is one of the points that when you try to sustain, su be sustainable a process in the future, it's important to consider something that helps you to enable this process for continuous improvement. The KPI is really important to have good KPIs that help you to enable and improve your strategy. If you have, if you need to adjust the aging of your equipment, it is one thing that you can go again to your strategy and adjust this. If you are seeing uh, that the health or the reliability is deteriorating in your asset, it is a changing, and yeah, it is a an alarm that you need to consider for update the strategy. 
And if the condition uh, for the process or the business change, it, it is another thing. We, we need to think about what is the the items that will help to have a sustainable process in the future and establish a feedback and governance between all the condition and um, source that I have in place to be uh, uh, decycled uh, in a good way. And at the end, I believe next slide, it's not changing, but Thank you so much. And at the end, this demi cycle that this plan do check and add and is a continued improvement as a strategy cycle is help to have uh, our strategies uh, updated in, in a dynamic way. And in this step, it's important to think, uh, keep the process evergreen. Um, to keep the process evergreen, there are some customers that at the moment only use time base. Maybe in three years they review the strategy because they don't have the technology to adjust in a dynamic way, for example. But if you have the option to uh, use the outcomes or your equipment, to measure and see, okay, when I see that the performance is decreasing, I will update the strategy in the dynamic way. It is one of the things that we need to think in the future. And the revaluate. At the end, if you see something that changed in the performance of your asset, it's important to go to the strategy, uh, update it, and keep the process uh, in a continued uh, improvement. Um, continue the opportunity of identification and when you document in the work history and or in the operator rounds if you are using another source all the source that you are executing the maintenance program is important to have uh, some methods to identify some opportunities and in these opportunities uh, help you to keep the process in a continued way. Uh, continue building the strategy. At the beginning, uh, maybe you finish the criticality assessment and you start with the high critical asset and equipment, but it's important to go through and continue building a strategy for the others. <clears throat> uh, and the last key to success is to ensure recommendation are be implemented. Sometimes, uh, in, the, in this process, people only finish with the recommendation, but I, I see sometimes that it's not implementing. It's important to implement the program, the asset strategy program, the maintenance program in your CMMS or EIM. Like when I told CMMS, maybe it's Maximo Oracle in EIM SIP but it's important to put the program in place and you can measure if your program is working good or not, or if it to change. All right, well, thank you, Mark and Anna, for a great presentation. And obviously the goal for everyone is to drive corrective actions and continuous improvement and just um, the presentation you gave us today, it, it offers a lot to think about, and we do have some questions here from our audience members. So if you don't mind, I will launch right into those. Uh, first one here, how would you recommend incrementally implementing strategy development and optimization efforts? I'll take that one. Uh, oftentimes, customers look at the prospect of this strategy optimization uh, process and they think this is going to be a lot of work. This is going to be very daunting, resource intensive, and um, they're not sure how to go about even starting that. And so what we propose is a systematic and method uh, methodical way of 
prioritizing where you focus. And one of the primary ways is that Ama talked about is through uh, focusing on your high critical systems or assets first. Uh, oftentimes, uh, we find that customers have uh, really specific or select set of systems or assets that if they fail, cost the major have the majority of consequence or impact on the business. And so ensuring that your equipment strategies are optimal for those critical items first is a great way of one, uh, getting your users uh, used to the process and the tools, uh, getting in immediate quick wins and value by taking this uh, subset or select a group of assets that are critical and, and ensuring that you've got the optimal strategies in place for those. And then, uh, of course, once you do that, once you go through that targeted systematic and phased approach to this, then you can roll out to a different equipment class or a different unit in the facility or a different level of criticality of asset. And so you don't have to boil the ocean. You don't have to start with every piece of equipment in the plant because that's really going to be a daunting way. So you need to um, eat the elephant one bite at a time and focusing on the bites that give you the most value first is a great way to get organizational wins, get buy-in and adoption from the users, and to prove value uh, early. Because we, we all know that we need to manage along with this the resourcing uh, aspect of it, the user aspect of it, and the change management aspect of it. So doing it incrementally, bite-sized at a time is what we Excellent advice there. And yes, boil the ocean. That is that is daunting, isn't it? But when you look at it this way, it's it's offering uh, the change management. And when folks can see that change happening, they get more invested. Um, I wanted to, Anne. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the asset strategy accelerators. Uh, is this like a plug and play, or how do, how does that work when somebody wants to use that? Yeah, uh, the. Accelerator that we have is something that you can have plug in play if you want to mention it that way. But I really recommend uh, it is a content library that we have. And if you have APN, yeah, you can import and load uh, in a template and then you can apply for your asset. Um, and then I recommend that your expertise in your business review and adjust for the operational context but you have all the failure modes uh, identified and all, all the mitigation action that is really a great content that we have coming from a lot of years ago. Um, and it's a library that the user can put in plug and play for the different categories. Well, just having the thousands of hours of expertise there. Now, if something happens, can they add their expertise? How does that work? It, they they face a problem. Can they then add to the thousands of all hours of expertise? Yeah, it is a lot. And and, and I want to mention uh, um, something additional that some customers, for example, uh, reach us and say, "Can you help to us uh, create a content, for example, for uh, any particular asset?" Um, yeah, we have a, a, an equi a, a team in, in GE that can help um, develop this content for a customer uh, in a short term. Uh, we have this service too. All right, and this kind of goes along with the next question we have, what you just mentioned. Uh, do you have subject matter expertise on staff to help with the strategy development and optimization? And I think that's what you were getting at, that you do partner with folks on that. Yeah, yeah, we have a, a service department um, that we have a lot of SME, uh, so your major expert, that is my group, uh, I'd be part of there. Um, additional, we have another group that is focused more to create content in the library that for this accelerator, but yeah, the answer is yes. 
All right. We have one more question here. Audience members, if you do have questions, you've got experts right here, uh, so feel free to, to toss in a question or two. Here's a question on KPIs. How can we ensure that we're measuring the right things? Isn't that the, the main question for everybody? Is um, When we are working with KPIs, one of the things that I like to work with the customer is first um, to review all the source that they have and then we can put in place sometimes. It's not for all the customer, depend on the maturity, but sometimes we need to work more in the data quality because when we enable the process, we think that the data is not good. And I like to put some um, KPI that help the customer to improve the data and then they, they, they will uh, work in, in in APM process. Um, for the as a strategy process in place, yeah, we have some KPI that we can see if the performance is uh, decreasing or not, or the reliability is decreasing or not. It depends what is the technologies that the customer has, and yeah, we can put in place some KPI to enable the process and keep evergreening and in um, keep the process in place in a continuous improvement. And I'll just add to that, it depends on what your goals are, right? So mm -hmm. what you want to achieve is what you should be measuring against. And oftentimes customers come and say, well, you know, uptime and reliability is our primary objective. Well, we need to be measuring against that and determining whether we have the right strategies in place to meet those goals. Uh, it could be asset health, it could be cost containment. So I would let your uh, business drivers uh, help you determine what things you should be measuring and also determining what data needs to be collected uh, to be able to feed into those KPIs for you to have confidence in the outcomes. Well, Mark and Anna, thank you so much for a thoughtful presentation, for fielding our questions here. Um, as you pointed out, it's Plan, Do, Check, Act, and start all over again to make sure that, that things keep continuously improving, and, and that's the goal for, for all of us. Audience members, did you like this presentation? Let us know your thoughts by answering our brief survey that will be posted to the screen in just a moment. Your candid answers not only are appreciated, but they do help us craft future events. Remember, this webcast will be available on chemicalprocessing.com. We will also send out an email with that link. Feel free to log in and view it again or to encourage your colleagues to view it. We also hope that you'll visit chemicalprocessing.com to gain access to even more tools and resources aimed at helping you achieve success. On behalf of Mark and Anna and the team at GE Digital, thank you for your attendance. We hope you have a great day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good one. <clears throat>